breaking headline at this hour just in the former president has pleaded not guilty uh, to the indictment that has been presented in that courtroom, the 15th floor of criminal court in Lower Manhattan. It's our understanding that he planned on making this plea himself and not through his lawyers. And John Santucci, what have you learned? David, I'm told by a source in the courtroom, the former president entered a plea of not guilty. Uh, we understand that uh, they are going through the indictment right now. I don't have a readout on that just yet. Um, but as that visual uh, showed, uh, the source telling me uh, the former president uh, sitting there listening quite intently right now, David. It's your understanding so far, John, that it was the president, the former president himself, who entered the plea? That I do not have clarity on, David. I'm working on that. Oh, I will we'll, we'll see if that We'll see if that bears out. That was an indication uh, given earlier. And again, as John points out, this would be a very strong indication, uh, Kate and Dan, that we're going to soon know what's in this indictment, the fact that he's pleaded not guilty. Yeah, and, and look, it's going to take them a little time to go through the indictment. If it is, you know, dozens of counts, although if it is redundant and sort of, it may sort of reflect exactly the same language in a lot of the counts, just a little bit of a different fact as to which record, et cetera. So we don't know exactly you know, how, de how detailed or, or complicated uh, the indictment is gonna be. But yes, I would expect that we should be getting this uh, very soon. Uh, they have it now, they've reviewed it, he's pled not guilty, and this is the time uh, for them to release it. I, and you know, it's gonna be released electronically, so there's no, you know, it's not like they literally need to walk out of the courthouse to deliver it to somebody. They've got it there, and they just have to decide when to release it. Dan, what do we see after this? I mean, take us through what the American public will see. They'll enter the plea. They'll leave the courthouse. They'll head back to Mar-a-Lago. The rest of us will start reporting out what's inside this indictment. But where does the case go from here? This, this is just the very beginning. Yeah, it, this is going to take a while. I mean, the first thing is going to be there are going to be motions, right? There are going to be efforts by the defense in particular to dismiss the case, to limit the charges, if they're felonies, to say the felonies should go away. Uh, there's gonna be a whole list of arguments that the defense is going to make about why the indictment should fail. Are we what? looking at months, more than a year? Here? Oh yeah, the, the entire process, I would expect, is gonna take more than a year. But that is going to be largely in the hands of the defendant. That is largely in the hands of Donald Trump. Remember, there's a right to a speedy trial. If the defendant wants to move a case quickly, a defendant can move a case quickly. That's not really up to the prosecutor. Now, there are certain things that can happen that are beyond a defendant's control, new evidence, whatever it is. But typically, it is up to the defendant to decide how quickly do we move this forward to trial. I would expect that Donald Trump is going to want to wait, uh, that there is going to be no rush on his part to move forward with this. I think there probably will be a rush to get out some of his motions, right? To say that this is a faulty indictment, that there shouldn't be any felonies here, that there's no crime committed, et cetera. That I think he's gonna want out quickly. But when it comes to actually going to trial, I think we're probably well over a year away. And that becomes part of the political calculation, obviously. Right, yeah. I think that's right, at least, I would say at least a year. And in terms of kind of the early responses by Trump's defense team, I think we'll learn a lot about their strategy through their sort of early responses. If they move to dismiss these charges on the basis that this is, as Takapina has been sort of alluding to on in interviews, that this is a political persecution, that this whole case is flawed for that reason, that I think injects some of the political rhetoric into this legal conversation. If instead they say things like the statute of limitations has already run. This was seven years ago. Probably that's a five-year statute. They're going to have to figure out how to finesse that. The prosecutors are. They may do it by saying the statute was paused while Trump was out of New York, of course, being the president in D.C. So there could be legal arguments. There could be more politically inflected arguments. There could be a combination. But I do think they're going to move quickly to try to shape the narrative that will give us some real clues about their larger strategy. For people at home watching and they hear this notion of motion to dismiss, what are the chances of that happening? It's unlikely, mm -hmm. but it, you know, there are some real arguments. Look, we haven't seen the indictment yet. We need to see exactly what it is to know how strong uh, the arguments may or not may not be. I think once Kate and I get a chance to actually review what exactly they're alleging, immediately we'll be able to think about, okay, well, what could they argue as a defense attorney to eliminate uh, the charges? But if there are felony counts here and it is in connection with falsification of business records. There is going to be an immediate and serious argument that the felony counts shouldn't apply. We're gonna to have to see what is it 
that the prosecution is arguing that l allows the, the misdemeanor to rise to the level of a felony. I have a million questions for you on that, but I'm going to wait until <laughs> right. we see what's okay. in the indictment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, because this could go in a multitude of directions. Yeah. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.